Hello Internet, and welcome to my latest video on GDPR. Four little letters that will have you exclaim, What? Seriously? Can't go help. I'm Michael Kincaid, aka Me and My Robot. I'm a Kentigo MVP, and currently the CTO of Eccentric Arts. We're a digital agency headquartered in Toronto, Canada. We're also in Ireland now too. I'm also not a lawyer. Why do I say that? Well, today we're going to discuss legislation. I'll be providing insight and tips regarding this legislation, but as with anything legal, the best people to talk to are lawyers. So, do you use the internet much? Browsing around, signing up for things, providing personal information to buy stuff online? Do you keep your friends and family and eager followers updated on the many social media platforms by filling them up with your personal data? I'm going to hedge my bets here, given you're watching this on YouTube, that the answers to most of these questions is yes. Well, did you know that your personal data is worth cash, money, coin, dough, green? Whatever you call it, your personal data has value. Value that, alongside advertising, helps fund the so-called free internet. Because it's valuable, it gets sold and passed around to other interested parties for such harmless endeavours as, you know, trying to influence elections. Much like you wouldn't want someone selling your kidney without your consent, you should have the right to own and protect your personal data. This is where GDPR comes in. GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation. It's a new data security law from the European Union whose main intent is to give individuals more control over their personal data. GDPR will accomplish this by imposing stricter rules on how companies acquire and manage personal data. Stricter rules that, if you happen to not comply with, well, you could be subject to fines. Non-compliance could cost you up to 20 million euros, which is just shy of 25 million US dollars, or 4% annual turnover. Now, let me emphasize the could in that sentence. There's been some scaremongering in the media over this. The regulation calls for fines to be appropriate. The extent to which you are fined will be based on the nature of non-compliance, uh, how much personal data you're holding, etc, etc. Being an EU law, regulations from the GDPR Act will affect all member states of the European Union. So, if your company isn't in the EU, then you have absolutely nothing to worry about at all. Right? Wrong. GDPR doesn't care where in the world your business resides. If your company or organization processes personal data for the offering of goods and services to the EU or monitors the behavior of citizens within the EU, then GDPR applies. When does this new law get applied? May the 25th, 2018. So given it's March at the time of recording, it's coming soon. GDPR sets out principles relating to the processing of personal data. In no specific order, these principles are lawfulness. Personal data should be processed lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the person whose data you're processing. Purpose limitation. Personal data should be collected for a specific, explicit, and legitimate purpose. You can't use the personal data for something you don't have consent for. Accuracy. Personal data should be accurate and, where necessary, kept up to date. If inaccurate, then that needs to be rectified or the data deleted without delay. Data minimization. Personal data must be adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purposes for which the data is being processed. Integrity and confidentiality. Personal data must be processed in a manner that ensures the appropriate security including protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing and against accidental loss, destruction or damage using the appropriate technical or organizational measures. Finally, accountability. If you're the one gathering personal data, then you're responsible for complying with GDPR and demonstrating that you're compliant. Fundamentally, these principles seek to close the loop in the existing and somewhat outdated laws that exist today. And it's about time Almost every month there seems to be another story in the news about some big online company getting hacked or an expose on how personal data stored in some social network ended up in the hands of some data analysis company without the explicit consent from the people. And people have every right to protest such incidents and be concerned about how their personal data is being misused. 
Thankfully, GDPR puts the rights of citizens front and centre within the legislation. So know your rights. These include your right to be informed, to know how your data is being used and by whom, your right of access, you should be able to get an inventory of your personal data and get a copy of it, your right to rectification, or in human speak, your right to have inaccurate data corrected, your right to erasure, to be forgotten, that you can request and have your personal data erased, your right to restrict processing, or to suppress it. Interestingly, when processing is restricted, that data can still be stored, just not used. Your right to data portability. I find this one interesting. You should have the right to extract your personal data from one provider, and if you want to, quite possibly import it into another. Your right to object. Say, for example, to the legitimate processing of your personal data by an official authority. Finally, you have rights in relation to automation, as in automated decision-making and profiling. If a company wants to power marketing automation with your personal data, then they will have to seek your consent before doing so. That's right, if you wanna get fancy with the digital marketing, then you need explicit consent that covers the exact scenario that you want to use the personal data for. The digital marketers amongst you might feel a slight elevation in your heart rate about now. Does getting explicit consent for each and every scenario you want to explore mean the end of digital marketing? Well, it is going to make it a little more involved. But my personal opinion is that this particular cloud could have a silver lining. Getting consent is a clear indicator of interest. By the very act of giving it, a lead just got a whole lot warmer. And those who haven't given it, well, you don't need to worry about them for now. Yes, you now have fewer leads, but they are better qualified, which at the end of the day is who we want to continue to nurture. GDPR has some weird jargon to get your head around. Much of this is centered around the rules described within the law. Our first rule is, as you might imagine, a central character in the world of personal data privacy. It's the person, or in GDPR terms, the data subject. Now in terms of who wants to actually capture the personal data of the data subject, well, this is typically done by some company or organization looking to use the personal data in how they market or provide their services. In the world of GDPR, companies and organizations who do this are referred to as the data controller. It's the data controller who defines how and why data is being requested and processed in the first place. For a digital agency such as ourselves, the data controller is typically our clients. For example, a client might want to capture personal data, such as occupation, from the data subject so that it can be used in digital marketing as part of their endeavors to drive lead generation. Just as we discussed the rights under GDPR, data controllers are going to have to ask for explicit consent for personal data and explain how they intend to use it. Managing consent and complying with all the individual rights a data subject has under GDPR, such as the right to access, the right to be forgotten, it, it's all a big undertaking. So much so that the GDPR legislation introduces a role dedicated to the legislation the companies should appoint. This is the data protection officer. The data protection officer can be thought of as a GDPR specialist who works for the company. They're responsible for ensuring everyone is educated on what it takes to be compliant. They play a role in monitoring compliance. They're also the contact for the supervising authority. So the authority holding you to account on your GDPR compliance. So if you work for a digital agency, such as Ecentric Arts, you might be wondering what your involvement is in all of this. Well, chances are that you fall into our last role, the data processor. The data processor processes data on behalf of the data controller. With whatever services your digital agency is providing to your client, if that involves personal data of EU citizens, then you're considered to be a data processor. So now the data controllers amongst you might feel a slight elevation in your heart rate right about now. You're likely asking questions such as, when and how do I ask for consent? How do I manage the consent once I have it? How do I map the internal flow of personal data? You likely have more than one system storing personal data. You're going to need to map all of this out between systems. How do I export a person's data on request? This is why mapping out the data flow is so important. You need to export all the data which could reside on disparate systems. And related to this, 
How do I delete a person's data on request? Certainly a lot to think about here. Thankfully, when it comes to managing the personal data of your website, Kentco have already come up with the answers and developed solutions to GDPR compliancy, which can be found in the very latest release of Kentco EMS version 11. If you want to check out all the brand new features, including what's in the box for GDPR, why not come here and sign up for a seven day hosted trial? Here's a trial I have up and running. You can actually kick off a GDPR demo by going to the pages module, going into special pages, and here you'll see a page called generator. From the generator, you can do all sorts of things like you can generate sample data for e-commerce demos for online marketing as well. And you'll see here, you can also set up the data protection GDPR demo. So I'm just gonna kick this off. And now the samples are enabled. Let's use the hosted trial and the GDPR samples to review the built-in support now available in Kentco EMS version 11. First up is how Kentco EMS version 11 supports your needs to understand data flow. In order to successfully manage personal data, you need to know where in the system it is stored so that you can analyze your compliance. With the version 11 documentation found at docs.kentco.com, Kentco have fully mapped out all the entities within their platform that store personal data. They have broken down each entity into three tables. Let's check out the contact entity. A contact is an online marketing entity that represents a website visitor and user. The first table contains a list of data from the entity itself that is considered to be personal. We can see the nature of the data, the column names and the database for this entity, and an overview of the purpose and description for the data. So for example, we can see that the data for our contact name is represented by several database fields and in terms of the purpose, we can see how this name is used in the interface for profiling and personal marketing within Salesforce integration, newsletter, and also reports. The second table helps describe the flow of personal data within Kentico itself by listing sources related to this entity. So for example, here, it details how the form entity is a source of personal data that maps into the contact entity. The third table contains information about other entities within Kentigo that have personal data that contain a reference to this entity. Here we can see that the activity entity references the contact entity from the activity contact ID column. Given each site is different and uses different features, the flow of personal data will be somewhat unique, though obviously there's going to be commonalities such as users, contacts, and so on. Having this resource, to map out data flow within Kentico based on your actual implementation is going to greatly help out. Now let's get into actual platform features for GDPR. At the heart of managing personal data on the website, it's going to be user consent. Kentico EMS now has features and API support related to asking for, tracking, and revoking consent related to personal data. There are two sides to consent management. We have the user or site visitor's perspective of being asked for and revoking consent. We also have the admin perspective of creating consent requests, assigning them to the site and making use of them as well. Let's check this out from both sides. Kentico EMS comes with a brand new module for all things GDPR. This is called data protection and is found under configuration. Within this module, we can see a consents area. Let's check it out. Here we can see a list of consents that have already been created, and we can also create new consents as and when they're required. Consents are made up of a display name and also a code name as well. There is a short text value that is likely what you want to show the user in the location that the consent is asked for, and then also a full text value, which you could use on the site anywhere that you were detailing the full context of the requested consent. This text also will support localization as well into any language variants that you have on your site. Back on the consents list, we can see we have two consents set up in the demo. 
The first is used for general tracking. This has been configured on the cookie law and tracking consent web part, which we can check out in the pages module. So if we go to the design tab of the master page, we'll see the cookie law and tracking consent web part. If we configure that and check out online marketing section, you'll see that the tracking consent value has been set to dancing goat general tracking, but this would list out any consents. So we can map the consent specifically to this web part. Now let's check out the second consent. The second consent is for the machine rental form. So we go and check out forms and have a look at our machine rental form. You'll see in the field specification that we have a field called consent. And this is a new form control within Kentico called consent agreement. And we can use that to map a field within our form to a particular consent. So again, here we have a list of those that are registered within the system. And we're mapping this field to the dancing goat machine rental form. If we have a look at that form on the pages module, under special pages, machine rental, you'll see here we have that form control, the consent form control, that's listing out the text that we had set up in our consent. So here I am as an online visitor. When I first come to the demo site, I'm presented with the global cookie law and tracking consent message, which I'm going to agree with. Next, I'm going to browse to the machine rental form. I'm going to fill that out and give my consent to the request concerning marketing and targeted content. The demo site also shows an example scenario here on the privacy page of presenting to the user consent they have given and allowing them to revoke these if they want. The whole point of tracking consent is so that you're compliant whenever you're using personal data and you'd be using personal data for digital marketing features such as marketing automation or segmentation within your contact management or your contact groups or personas, a whole variety of different places where you can actually use that personal data. And you tend to use it within your online marketing rules. As an example, if we go to the pages module, on the home page, you'll see that we have a piece of content where we're using content personalization. So now that we're tracking consents, we can use that within our rules that determine whether or not a variant will show to a particular user. So as an example, if I go to the variant properties here, you'll see the display condition. So what I wanna do with this now, is I want this to take consent into consideration. So here we have a rule that we can use, the contact has agreed with consent. We can add that in. And here we can select the specific consent that drives whether or not we are allowed to use this feature for a given user. So here I could select the consent, set the parameter, and now this is being taken into consideration for this variant. Next, we have the right to data portability. Under GDPR, users can request their personal data in a machine readable format. We can see an example in the demo of how to provide for these requests. So if we go to our data protection module, you'll see that we have a data portability area. And here we can search for a particular user who's made the request. We do this by their email address, press search for personal data, and you'll see that all of their information, all of their personal data has been output here as a machine readable format. In this case, it's XML. Now, the plumbing behind this is fully extensible within Kentico. You can create your own implementations of this. You can change the format, say to JSON, and you can extend it to go and get personal information that might reside on other systems as well. But here I can copy this information and I can provide it to the person who has requested their data. The right of access is similar to the right to data portability, except in this case, we're exporting to a human readable format. So in the right to access section of the data protection module, we'll put in an email address, search for personal data, and here you can see that we have 
all of the personal data for this person, but it's in a human readable format. This export is also customizable and extensible, and it's up to the developer to determine what information needs to be collected and then how that should be output into the particular human readable format that, that makes sense for your users. Finally, we have the right to erasure or the right to be forgotten. And in this scenario, a user will have contacted us and asked us to remove all the personal data that we have about them from the website. Lo and behold, in the data protection module within Kentico EMS version 11, we have a section called the right to be forgotten. And here, just like the other sections, I put in the email address of the user who has made this request, and I can search to see what personal data we have in the system. Here you can see that I can select data to delete. In this window, I can pick the particular areas of personal data that I want to remove, or I can remove all of them. Similar to data portability and the right to access, the right to be forgotten is something that your developers are going to need to implement. Uh, the exact nature behind how that works, what information it erases, and where it gets that from. As you could be not only erasing data from Kentico, but you could build integrations to erase that data from other systems as well. What information gets erased and how that works, it's going to be dependent on, on several factors, such as how the website gathers, processes, and stores personal data in general, uh, the nature of legal requirements that you wish to fulfill, and there could also possibly be legal considerations that allow or require the website's owner to hold personal data. For example, e-commerce records that are used for accounting purposes, that information would need to remain. Now, I've really just covered the tip of the GDPR iceberg, but hopefully this video provides you with an insight into the new legislation on personal data that will come into effect on May the 25th, 2018. If you use Kentico, but haven't upgraded to EMS version 11, then now is the time to reach out to your digital agency so that you're armed with all the new GDPR support found on the platform. If GDPR is applicable to your business, but your site isn't on Kentico at all, then why not sign up for a free trial and see what all the fuss is about. Thanks for your time, and remember, I'm not a lawyer.